Hello and welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're diving into the wonders of Cabo Verde. Did you know these islands hold more than just stunning landscapes? We'll explore Cabo Verde's essence and rich history. Uninhabited until the 15th century, these islands have a fascinating past. But there's a hidden connection between the past and present. Curious to discover more? Stick around till the end for this intriguing piece of history. Situated off the west coast of Africa in the mid-Atlantic, lies the archipelago nation of Cabo Verde. Its collection of ten jagged islands and five small islets is divided into windward and leeward groups by the prevailing winds. The rugged landscape ranges from barren plains to tall volcanic peaks over 4,000 feet high on islands like Fogo and Santo Antão. Sheer cliffs plunge dramatically into the ocean along several shores. The climate here is dry with little natural water supply, a hardship for residents. Periodic sandstorms and erosion batter the islands due to the strong winds. Lack of plant life in coastal areas and inland plains adds to the soil degradation across Cabo Verde. However, the valley interiors do harbor denser vegetation. Three main urban centers anchor down Cabo Verde's population across its varied geography. The capital, Praia, houses nearly a quarter of all residents on the largest island, Santiago. San Vicente's port, Mindelo, is considered the cultural capital, home to notable musical traditions. Meanwhile, inland Asomada serves as an agricultural hub in Santiago's Santa Catarina region. The Cabo Verde Islands were originally uninhabited. Some records indicate Genoese explorers may have stopped there briefly in the 14th century, but permanent settlement didn't begin until 1462. That year, Portuguese ships sailing under Diogo Gomes and Antonio Danoli landed on the islands. Realizing they were uninhabited with lush vegetation and fresh water, they claimed them for the Portuguese crown. The Portuguese quickly established the islands as an important resupply point for ships traveling to and from the New World, as well as the coast of mainland West Africa. To develop the islands, they brought livestock and introduced slavery, forcibly transporting West Africans to Cape Verde. This formed the beginnings of the rich Creole culture found in Cabo Verde today. Over the 16th century, the harsh climate and conditions made Cabo Verde dependent on the transatlantic slave trade. At their peak, the islands were a major entrepot supplying the Americas. The increased wealth allowed the capital city of Ribera Grande, later renamed Cidad de Velha, to flourish as a cultural hub for Creole traditions. As the slave trade declined in the 18th century, Cabo Verde's prosperity dwindled. A long period of drought and famine through the mid-1900s caused many Cabo Verdeans to emigrate abroad. Still part of Portugal's empire, dissent against Portuguese rule began stirring. By 1956, Amilcar Cabral led a movement that brought about independence for Cabo Verde in 1975. Today, Cabo Verde continues to rebuild and develop its cultural identity. With pristine beaches and rich Afro-Portuguese influences, tourism now drives much of its economy. But agriculture, fishing, shipping and trade still tie the archipelago to its storied past, located at the crossroads of the Atlantic. As of 2022, the total population numbers are around 590,000 according to World Bank estimates. The vast majority have mixed African and European descent, blending influences from immigrants, colonists and the slave trade over centuries. Ethnically, the population consists primarily of Creole, mixed African and Portuguese ancestry. Many Cape Verdeans also have Lebanese, Syrian, French or Brazilian heritage in their family backgrounds. 
In terms of languages, the official language is Portuguese. However, the Cape Verdean Creole language is used more frequently among native islanders in everyday life. The Creole utilizes vocabulary stemming from African and Portuguese roots. Religiously, most Cape Verdeans are Roman Catholics. Around 70 to 85% identify with Catholicism. Protestants make up close to 8% of the population. Over 10% claim no religious affiliation, with Islam and other beliefs followed by smaller groups. Lacking natural resources, Cape Verde has developed an economy centered around services and trade. Tourism now drives much of its economic growth. Thanks to sandy beaches and rich culture, visitors flock to these remote Atlantic Isles. Around a quarter of the nation's $2 billion GDP comes from tourism. Over 700,000 tourists visited Cape Verde in 2019, providing crucial foreign exchange income but the global pandemic severely hampered travel and halted this vital revenue stream. Still, Cape Verde has worked to diversify its economy beyond beach resorts. Transportation, shipping services, light manufacturing and fisheries also play important roles. Much industry centers on the ports, like Mindelo, a historical trade hub between Africa, Europe and the Americas. However, Unemployment still plagues nearly 1 in 10 Cape Verdeans, especially the youth. Persistent droughts regularly threaten agriculture too, leaving the islands dependent on imported food, which drains the economy. Limited natural freshwater access poses another constraint. The islands of Cape Verde showcase a vibrant blend of African and Portuguese colonial influences. After five centuries of Portuguese rule, Cape Verdean culture seamlessly fuses both traditions in its literature, music, holidays and arts. In terms of holidays, Cape Verdeans celebrate many Catholic observances like Easter, Feast of the Assumption and Christmas. These sit alongside national holidays, honoring Cape Verdean independence and heroes. Other festivities have African roots, like Batuco, performed call and response singing and dancing, led by women. Cape Verde's mixed origins come through in other creative expressions too. The islands nurtured a distinct literary identity in the 20th century through poets like Baltazar Lopez da Silva, and publications like Claridad magazine. Authors now write pieces highlighting the local Criolo culture in both the national language, Portuguese, and the Creole vernacular. Musically mournful styles like Mona Dirges and Mazurkas echo Portuguese and European influences. Upbeat genres like Funana, driven by the accordion-like gaita instrument, have African origins. Famous singer Cesaria Evora popularized Coladeras, a faster version of the Morna abroad. To preserve its blended history, Cape Verde also houses cultural institutions like the National Historic Archive and an ethnographic museum in the capital Praia. The old colonial town of Cidade de Velha presents striking Portuguese architecture across its historic buildings and centers named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, while vestiges of colonial rule leave their imprint, a distinctly Cape Verdean culture persists, one that artfully fuses African rhythms and heritage with European traditions into a Creole melting pot. This unique blend colors life across Cape Verde's scattered Atlantic Isles through song, literature, and beyond. Cachupá, a soul-warming stew, combines hominy, beans, sweet potato, cassava, and a choice of fish or meats like sausage, goat, beef, or chicken. Originally a dish for the less affluent, it's now a revered national treasure and a cherished comfort food. Morea involves soaking in salt water 
and frying an eel until it achieves a crunch. With salt, garlic, black pepper, lemon juice and more, it's a flavorful dish often enjoyed for lunch, dinner or as a snack paired with cocktails. This breakfast dish, made with cornmeal, sugar and cinnamon, pairs perfectly with fried eggs, rice, linguiza or fish. Locals enjoy it throughout the week, reheating leftovers for smaller breakfasts alongside coffee. Originating from Portugal, Zerem comprises corn flour, water, salt, butter and bay leaves. The Cape Verdean variation, Zerem de Festa, includes pork, beans, spices and tomatoes, often served at festivals and special occasions. This sweet dessert akin to Spanish flan consists of milk, vanilla, egg yolks, sugar and lemon zest, topped with caramel. A popular treat served cold, enjoyed widely across former Portuguese colonies, made with coconut, sugar and butter, doce de coco cooks slowly into sweet chunks. Often wrapped in decorative paper, this coconut candy serves as a delightful snack lasting for weeks. Grog, a rum derived from distilled sugarcane, is a popular drink on Santiago and Santo Antao Islands. Used in medicinal preparations and available in various qualities, it's a cultural staple in Cape Verde. If you enjoyed this video on Cabo Verde, you'll love this next video.